29 minutes and 59 seconds. That's been the dreaded record limit for video shooters for quite a number of years now. But where did it all stem from and why is it still around? Well, the original 30 minute record limit actually stems back to 1996 and it was all to do with import duty. Now, import duty is a tax that gets applied when you ship goods from one country to another. Now, there's a couple of factors that vary how much tax gets paid. Firstly, what the item is. Secondly, what the value of the item is. And thirdly, what agreements are in place between the country that's sending the item and the country that's receiving it. These taxes have to be paid by the company that's sending the items out to begin with, namely the manufacturer of the item. So those costs are then passed on to the consumer in higher prices. So back in 1996, the European Union passed legislation that started putting import duty on camcorders. Now this import duty ranged from 4.9% up to 14%. But importantly, they only put import duty onto camcorders, not stills cameras. I don't know why they felt the need to only impose taxes on camcorders. I don't know if they were maybe trying to price peeping toms out of the market. Now, granted, this was way back in 1996. Oh, so many years ago. I was like eight at the time. And back then, you really didn't have this whole hybrid market of cameras that film both stills and video. Stills cameras only focused on stills, and if you wanted to shoot video, then you needed to buy a video camera. Christ, back then, most people were still using film. However, there may have been devices that could shoot a mixture of stills and video. So how do you distinguish what is a stills camera versus what is a video camera? And the guideline the EU came out with was that if the device could record video for longer than 30 minutes consecutively, then it was deemed as a video camera, not a stills camera. Now, DSLRs at that point were quite niche products that were really, really expensive. It wasn't until around about 2005 that they started to become more mainstream. It wasn't then until 2008 when Nikon released the D90 that we saw the first DSLR that incorporated video shooting. That was then pushed further with Canon releasing the 7D which was the first to do full HD and then the 5D Mark II that was the first to do full frame video recording. Now for those cameras the 30 minute record limit wasn't really that much of a problem because most of the time they never got to shooting 30 minutes, they'd tend to stop after about 12. Because those cameras employed a FAT32 file system, which has a maximum single file size limit of 4 gig. So the camera either recorded for 30 minutes or stopped when the file hit 4 gig, whichever came first. And recording the highest quality on those cameras, you hit 4 gig after about 12 minutes. But since then, subsequent releases found workarounds. Either the camera would automatically start a new file as soon as it hit 4 gig, so you could record for 30 minutes, you just end up with like three different files that you had to stick back together. And then the FAT32 file system got superseded, so now the file size limit doesn't become a problem. But manufacturers still then had the 30 minute record limit problem, i.e. if they allowed the camera to record for 30 minutes or longer, then any of the cameras that they ship into the EU, they're going to get deemed as a camcorder and get hit with much higher taxes. So the pretty much universally accepted solution was to have the camera automatically stop recording once it got to 30 minutes which is an absolute ball ache for video shooters and caught me out a few times in the past as well. Now, the strange thing is that that tax was to blame for 30 minute record limits in a lot of cameras for 22 years. However, as of late 2018, the EU actually scrapped that import tax. So now it doesn't matter whether it can record continuously for 30 minutes or 30 days. It doesn't matter whether it gets classed as a camera or a camcorder or a unicorn. It doesn't get hit with any import duty. Sony pretty much shows you where that 30 minute record limit disappeared because the a7 III has a 30 minute record limit. Then the a6400, which was the next camera released, doesn't. But every subsequent camera since, the a7R4, the a9 Mark II, the a6600, and even the a6100 don't have 30 minute record limits, so you can just record indefinitely. However, since that tax change, Canon have released the RP, the 90D, and the M6 Mark II all have the 30 minute record limit. Nikon have released the Z6, the Z7, and the Z50 
all have the 30 minute record limit. Fuji released one camera early this year that still had the 30 minute record limit, although they've subsequently dropped the 30 minute record limit from their more recent cameras. There's only three possible reasons that I can come up with as to why these manufacturers are continuing to stick with the 30 minute record limit. The first is hardware limitations. Maybe the cameras just physically aren't capable of recording for prolonged periods of time. The second, marketing. Maybe they're planning on releasing some higher end cameras soon that won't have the 30 minute record limit and they want this to be an incentive for you to upgrade. Or the third is they just can't be asked. Either way, the reasoning behind the 30 minute record limit to begin with was all due to tax which no longer exists and now I don't know why we still have them. But that's it for this video guys, as always if you have any questions or queries, the comment box is down below. While you're down there, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and there is a link to my Patreon account if you'd like to go and support me through there. But thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.